Montana's Crown of the Continent, Glacier National Park, Part 1, The Geography and Ecology of the Park. Glacier National Park is located mostly in Montana as well as in parts of Canada. It covers an area of approximately 4,102 square kilometers or 1,584 square miles of land. It is the 12th largest national park in the U.S. The rock formations of Glacier National Park date back to more than one and a half billion years. The rocks, primarily sedimentary rocks, were deposited in bodies of water 1.6 billion to 800 million years ago. For around 900 million years, the rocks sat in the bodies of water. When the Rocky Mountains started developing their shape, those rocks were moved east. Besides being moved east, they were also moved upwards with the mountains and formed a significantly elevated plateau. Because the sedimentary rocks that got moved over the existing layer of rocks in the area got moved over relatively quickly and were preserved well, the top rock layer contains some of the most well-preserved animal organisms in the world. The bottom layer rock is rock from the Cretaceous Age, but the top layer rock is from the Proterozoic Age. The mountains of Glacier National Park were carved by what the park is named after, glaciers. During the last ice age approximately 22,000 years ago, glacial ice covered over 75% of Glacier National Park, and as the moving ice spread at a slow pace, it broke the rock underneath it, carving the mountains we see today. The glaciers also created lakes, streams, and knife-like mountain ridges. The glacial lakes are especially interesting, as their color is not that of regular lake water, but of light blue water. That is due to fine powder from the glacially broken rocks entering the water and getting spread throughout it. The water might also appear gray or whitish in color. As some of the glaciers moved to other places, others stayed put on mountainsides. For around 9.5 thousand years, the glaciers melted at a slow pace. Beginning 12,000 years ago, the glaciers melted at a much faster pace, with a little ice age slowing down their rate of melting for a short time. However, global warming has gotten the better of the climate, and the glaciers are predicted to disappear by the year 2020. Glacier National Park has mountains and valleys in between which exist very sizable elevation changes, leading to an abundance of climates. In the summer, most of the park can have moderately warm to hot temperatures during the day, but can plunge below zero during the night. In the winter, temperatures range from slightly above zero during the day to tens of degrees below zero at night. Due to these varying temperatures and the elevation difference, several ecosystems exist in the park. The ecosystems are characterized by their unique location in the park. One of those ecosystems is the lake, pond, or river ecosystem. This ecosystem is home to only a select few species of fish and amphibians, as the water is a few degrees above freezing in most of the park, and not much plankton lives in it. These ecosystems are primarily found at the bottoms of valleys or running down mountainsides. Another of those ecosystems is the wet dense forest ecosystem. This ecosystem is home to all species of animals and most species of plants. These ecosystems can be found in valleys or on the lower sides of mountains. Another ecosystem is the deciduous tree or shrub ecosystem. This ecosystem is like the wet dense forest in some ways, but is less dense and wet, and is home to less species of plants and animals. These ecosystems can be found a bit higher upon sides of mountains than wet dense forest ecosystems. Yet another ecosystem is the alpine tundra ecosystem. This ecosystem is even less like the wet dense forest ecosystem than the deciduous tree ecosystem and is home to just a few species of plants and animals. These ecosystems can be found high up on mountain slopes. The third to last ecosystem is the grassland ecosystem. This ecosystem is home to mostly grass with some animals present as well as the occasional tree. These ecosystems can be found very low down on mountainsides or in valleys or fields. The second to last ecosystem is the moist meadows ecosystem. This ecosystem often intersects with a water ecosystem, which gives it the name moist meadows. These ecosystems are home to grass and several species of flowers and the occasional small animal. The last ecosystem is the dry open forest ecosystem. This ecosystem is located on fields or in valleys and is home to aspen and cottonwood trees. It is not home to many other plants, nor is it home to an abundance of animals, 
but the occasional big animal might come into this ecosystem. All the ecosystems in the park depend on three things, fire, glacial melting, and precipitation. Fire is an important balance to the park ecosystem as it destroys old dying plants and makes space for new ones. Glacial melting is a very important factor as it provides water to all the ecosystems and precipitation works with glaciers to do that too. Thank you for watching this video and as always if you enjoyed it leave a like rating, favorite, or subscribe. And be sure to watch out for part 2 of this mini series.